Hey guys, welcome to our Sunday service. Let me pray for us as we begin our worship today. God, I want to thank you so much for being a God who loves us, being a God who knows everything, even this uh, COVID pandemic. We know uh, as of this past week, uh, the numbers are rising and it seems like uh, the situation is not getting any better. And Lord, we do miss uh, the Sundays where we can come together at church to worship with our friends. We do miss uh, times where we can just uh, not wear masks and being able to talk and just run around and play with our friends. But Lord, we know that you are a God who knows all things and we know that you are allowing these things to happen for a reason. We do pray that you'll continue to keep us safe and we thank you that we can still worship you in this way. Would you be with us as we uh, worship you today? Uh, although it is through a screen, uh, we know that you are still glorified as we worship you with you, all of our hearts. So we pray that you will help us to do that today. May we give you our very best worship as we sing from the top of our lungs, as we listen carefully to the words that you have uh, in store for us. We love you, Lord. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, if you are able, let's all stand up and let's get ready to worship God. Come on, clap your hands. Here we go. That's it. Yeah, we're all in this together and we're having fun. We're here to spread the love of God to everyone. Gonna get a little crazy, yeah, a little wild. Here we go now, come give it a try. Move it to the left now. As we continue in our worship, let's all recite the Apostles' Creed together. Are right, you guys ready? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Uh, the Word of God comes from the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 16 to 34. So if you have your Bibles with you, please turn to Acts, chapter 17, verses 16 to 34. So Acts is in the New Testament, so it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then it's the book of Acts. So it's the fifth book of the New Testament. So Acts, chapter 17, verses 16 to 34. Now we're not going to read the entire passage, uh, but what we're going to do, like we did before, is we'll watch a short video that gives us a summary, a good summary of today's story. And then we'll come back together and read a section of that passage. So let's watch this video first. And as we watch this video, maybe you can go get your Bibles. And after that, we'll come back together to read uh, a section of today's passage. Paul was concerned about the city of Athens. You know, maybe like my mom gets concerned when my room gets trash. Maybe something like that. Paul was concerned because Athens was full of false idols that the people had made. It made Paul sad to see people worshiping false gods. Paul went to the synagogue and talked with the Jews about Jesus. Every day in the marketplace, he would tell the good news about Jesus and the resurrection to anyone who was there. Some philosophers, Oh, you don't know what a philosopher is? Uh, a philosopher are, are, were usually men who like to think and reason and argue a lot. Anyway, some philosophers heard Paul teach. What is this babbler trying to say? They asked one another. He seems to be preaching about foreign gods. Other men wanted to hear more, so they invited Paul to speak at the Areopagus a place where people came to discuss important ideas. The men said, what you say sounds strange to us. We want to know what it means. Paul spoke respectfully. People of Athens, he began, I see you are very religious people. I even saw an altar you have for an unknown God. I can tell you about it. The God who made the world is Lord of heaven and earth. He does not live in places people make. He does not need anything from us because he is the one who gives life and everything else. He created the people of every nation and wants them to know him as God. We live and move and exist through him. We are his and he is not made of gold or silver or stone like man makes. Paul continued, God is alive and he commands all people everywhere to repent and turn away from disobeying him. Paul also explained that God sent Jesus. When Paul told how Jesus rose from the dead, some people made fun of Paul. Others wanted to hear more. Because of Paul taught the good news of Jesus, some men and women in Athens became followers of Jesus. All right, so that's the story of today of Paul visiting this, uh, the town or the city of Athens. So let's read that uh, together this morning. So we're going to read from Acts chapter 17. We'll read just 22 to 28, verses 22 to 28. So let's get out your Bibles, Acts 17, and we'll read 22 to 28. Are you guys ready? Verse 22, so Paul, standing in the midst of the Aeropagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being the Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man. Nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he, he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way towards him and find him, Yet he is actually not far from each one of us. In him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. This is God's word. Thanks be to God. Uh, friends, today's story 
takes place where Paul visits a town or a city called Athens. Now, Athens is located in Greece. Friends, have you ever visited uh, the country of Greece? I know as of right now, because of the coronavirus, you can't really travel. For many of us, our summer plans, our summer vacations have been put on pause. But uh, Greece is actually a really beautiful country. It's full of beautiful landscapes, rich history, incredible architecture, and really tasty food. Uh, you know, they're famous for their olives. They're also famous for their Greek yogurt. Get it? Greek yogurt. And also, did you know that Olympics, the Olympic Games, started from Greece? There's also many interesting things about Greece, uh, but the capital of Greece is Athens. And in today's passage, or today's Bible story, Paul visits the city of Athens. Uh, no, Paul didn't go to Athens because he wanted to go see the Parthenon or because he wanted to go watch the Olympics or because he wanted to eat some olives and Greek yogurt. No, he visited Athens because he wanted to share about Jesus to the people of Athens. But as soon as Paul arrived in Athens, he saw something that was really disturbing. He saw something that really broke his heart. As soon as he got to Athens, he saw how the city was full of these giant statues made of gold and silver that looks like some mythical creatures. And there were people actually bowing down to these creatures or to these statues and worshiping these statues. There were so many of these images of false gods or idols, yet they didn't even know who they were worshiping. Because as we see in verse 23, uh, even in the inscription of the uh, statues, it says, to the unknown gods. This really broke Paul's heart because you see, Paul was the one, Paul was uh, aware of and he knew and he believed in the one true God who is the creator of not only heaven and earth, but it's also God the Father who loves us and who cares for us. The one true God uh, who is not confined as a statue that is dead and can't talk or hear, but we have a God who can who is alive, who is living and active, and he listens to his people. He listens to our prayers, and he wants to meet with his people each and every day. Our God doesn't need us to do anything for him. He doesn't require of us to offer up sacrifices, but instead, he gives everything that we need. He even sent Jesus, his only begotten son, to become the sacrifice on our behalf, the greatest sacrifice so that through his death and through his resurrection, we can have this amazing, intimate relationship with God forever and ever. But as Paul shared this good and incredible news about who God is and what Jesus has done for them, there were mixed reactions. Well, actually, the majority of the people began laughing at Paul. They started mocking Paul and making fun of him for believing that someone could actually come back to life, for believing that Jesus had resurrected from the dead. Well, Paul, you see, he didn't believe that Jesus rose again from the dead from the beginning, uh, but he met Jesus face to face back in Acts chapter 9. Paul was not a follower of Jesus, but he met Jesus who rose again from the dead on the road to Damascus, and from that point on, he believed that Jesus is truly the Son of God. He personally experienced the risen Jesus, and that's why he was able to boldly share about Jesus and about the one true God himself. Now, as discouraging as this might sound, as many people refused to believe in the one true God. As many people refused to believe anything that Paul had to share in Athens, and as many people uh, began making fun of Paul for what he had to share, there were actually a few who believed what Paul was sharing to be the truth. So they followed him and as they want, because they wanted to hear more about Jesus and the true God himself. Friends, when we take a look at our lives, when we take a look at ourselves and the world that we're living in today, I don't think it's very different from the Athens. There are many who are living their entire lives and worshiping idols and bowing down to false gods rather than worshiping our true God. Friends, what are idols? Idols are some things or anything and everything that we place above God in our lives. Idols are things that we place above God in our lives. So for some of us, money can be an idol, or our desire for money, or what money can do for us in return. That can be an idol, right? 
We think only if we had a million dollars, only if we had more money, our lives would be so much better. That is an idol. Maybe for others, it's video games. The first thing as we wake up, the first thing that we think about is video games. That is an idol. Or maybe it's food. Maybe it's family. The list can go on and on and on as many people in the world today also, like the people of Athens, are worshiping idols as we place anything and everything above God. Friends, let me ask you, what are some things that you place above God? Because most ultimately, we tend to prioritize ourselves, our own lives, our own desires, and our own dreams, and our own goals above God, don't we? And this actually blocks us. This actually blinds us and hinders us from growing closer to God. As Paul shares this great news about Jesus to the people of Athens, I believe he's also sharing this story to us as well, for us to listen as well. Friends, because of Jesus Christ and what he has done for us on the cross, we now have this full access, this VIP pass to God, who is not only the creator of the universe, but also created us. He created you, and he has given you life, and he provided everything that you need in your life, your family, your parents. And He calls us His beloved. He calls us His children. But in return, how do we treat Him? Many times we're not as excited about God as He is towards us. Many times we're not really interested in going to church on Sunday. Many times we don't really want to worship God or sing the songs or do the body motions. We do not love God as much as He loves us. And we don't think about Him the way He thinks about us. Maybe we react just like the people of Athens, and just brush it off or laugh as we refuse to believe in the truth of who God is. Friends, let's not let anything get in between our relationship with God. What are some things that are blocking us? What are some things that are in between our relationship with God? Let's not let anything draw us further and further away from God. Let's throw those things away so that we can grow closer to God. I'm sure it's been very difficult for many of us to worship from home because of COVID. I'm sure you guys really miss, I do, seeing each other, seeing your friends here at church and worshiping together in person. But until we meet again face to face, let's not let anything bother us. Let's not any, let anything distract us from worshiping God. Let's do our very best to listen to God, to respond to His Word each and every day. Let's pray. Let's really pray and ask God to help us not to place anything above God, especially ourselves. Instead, let's pray that He will always be number one in our lives, that He will always remain our number, be our number one priority in the lives that we're living in today. Amen? So let's pray together, and let's pray that prayer together. God, please help me to make you the number one priority in my life. Help me not to place myself, place my family, place money, or place any other creative things as idols before you, but help me to place you before anything else. Uh, God, I know it is difficult to worship you in this way, and we really miss worshiping together in person. But until we meet face to face, we pray that you will help us to make this worship just as special each and every Sunday and help us to live a life that is pleasing to you uh, above all. We thank you. We love you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, let's go into a time of offering. Let's pray this prayer together. God, I give my life as an offering to you. Amen. All right, guys, let's all stand up and let's get ready for our closing praise.
Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever. Amen.